Good evening, this is Akashwani Kohima. I am Kuku with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says technology can play a big role in agriculture, health and education. Christians around the world and in Nagaland observes Good Friday. Government issues advisory against calls impersonating Department of Telecommunications and threatening people to disconnect mobile numbers. An election commission says over 79,000 violations reported so far through a vigil app since the announcement of general elections. Now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says digital public infrastructure is a big requirement in itself and the government is extending the digital facilities to all the villages. Interacting with philanthropist Bill Gates, Modi said technology can play a big role in agriculture, health and education. Talking about health, Modi said around 2 lakh Ayushman Arogya Mandirs have been built in villages and these health centers are connected with the best hospitals with modern technology as a bridge. He said India has democratized technology to prevent monopoly. The Prime Minister said the government is con- committed to ensuring that emerging talent from within the community can continuously contribute and enhance its value to foster trust in technology among people. He said, today, data security remains a paramount concern. During the interaction, the Prime Minister also said that his government will allocate funds to scientists for local research in cervical cancer and he wants to vaccinate all girls to protect from it. Christians around the world and in Naglan observed Good Friday today, marking the crucifixion of Jesus Christ with special prayer services in churches and processions. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in a social media post, said on Good Friday, we remember the profound sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The Prime Minister hoped that everyone finds strength in the lessons of compassion and forgiveness it teaches us. Chief Minister Nipu Ryo and Deputy Chief Ministers Wai Paton and T.R. Ziliang also wished the people and shared their message. Patton said, as we commemorate the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, let us reflect deeply on Christ's teaching of compassion, forgiveness, and selflessness. Patton further wished that Christ's example may inspire all to lead lives of humility, kindness, and service to others, transcending divisions of creed or background. Zeliang, in his message, said that the cross of Jesus Christ be a symbol of hope and salvation for all humanity and hope that all citizens will be blessed with the gift of forgiveness and redemption. Government has issued an advisory against calls impersonating the Department of Telecommunications, DOT, and threatening people to disconnect mobile numbers. The DOT has also issued an advisory about WhatsApp calls from foreign origin mobile numbers, impersonating government officials and duping the people. The DOT in a statement said cybercriminals through such calls try to threat or steal personal information to carry out cybercrime or financial frauds. The department said it does not authorize anyone to make such calls on its behalf and has advised people to stay vigilant and asked not to share any information on receiving such calls. The DOT has advised citizens to report such fraud communications at the Chakshu Report Suspected Fraud Communications Facility of the Sanchar Sati portal www.sancharsati.gov.in. The DOT said citizens can check the mobile connections in their name at the Know Your Mobile Connections facility of the Sanchar Sati portal and report any mobile connection not taken by them or not required. The DOT has also advised citizens to report at Cybercrime Helpline number 1930 or www.cybercrime.gov.in in case of already a victim of cybercrime or financial fraud. Election Commission's C-Vigil app is a hit with voters with over 79,000 violations reported so far through the Complaints app since the announcement of the general elections. The Election Commission said in a statement that over 99% of complaints have been resolved and close to 89% of these complaints have been resolved within 100 minutes. More than 58,500 complaints received are against illegal hoardings and banners. More than 1,400 complaints received pertain to money, gifts, and liquor distribution. Close to 3% of the complaints pertain to the defacement of property. 
Out of the 535 complaints received for the display of firearms and intimidation, 529 have already been resolved. 1,000 complaints reported were for campaigning beyond the prohibited period, including use of speakers beyond the permitted time. Sea Vigil is part of the poll body's step to leverage digital tech to ensure free, fair and inducement-free polls. This news comes to you from Akashvani Kohima. You can also listen to this news bulletin on News on Air app and YouTube channel AIR News Kohima. The government e-marketplace, GEM, has closed the current financial year with a record 4 lakh crore rupees in gross merchandise value GMV. It has doubled its GMV as compared to the previous fiscal year. Briefing media in New Delhi today, CEO of GEM, P.K. Singh said, this testifies to the GEM portal's unique digital capabilities and functionalities that have facilitated greater efficiency, transparency and seamlessness in public procurement. He said, nearly 50% of this gross merchandise value has been attributed to the procurement of services, displaying a remarkable surge of 205% in terms of services procured on GEM last financial year. Singh said that through initiatives like Vocal for Local, One District, One Product and Startup Runway, GEM has provided a level playing field for domestic businesses to grow and thrive. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar and his Ukrainian counterpart Dmitry Kuliba discussed the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict and its wider ramifications in a meeting in New Delhi today. In a social media post, Dr. Jay Shankar said he spoke on global and regional issues of mutual interest. He reiterated India's commitment to strengthen the overall relationship, including bilateral cooperation. In his opening statement during the meeting, Dr. Jay Shankar said the Ukraine foreign minister's visit gives the opportunity to understand the situation in Ukraine. Dr. Jay Shankar said that in recent months, they have had interactions at various levels and some bilateral mechanisms have also met, which have created a momentum in the bilateral relations. In the wake of Israel's ongoing counteroffensive in Gaza, the International Court of Justice, ICJ, has ordered Jerusalem to enable the unhindered flow of aid into Gaza to avert a famine. The decision was taken unanimously by the ICJ amid a warning that famine could hit Gaza within weeks. Israel termed the allegation of blocking aid unfounded. Responding to the court order, the Israeli foreign ministry said it was continuing to promote new initiatives and to expand existing ones to allow a continuous flow of aid into Gaza by land, air and sea. Israel also reiterated its stand that Hamas was to blame for the situation in Gaza and for starting the war. The District Disaster Management Authority, DDMA Perrin, distributed relief material to those affected by the widespread rain, hailstones and heavy wind on 26 March. The DDMA contributed 220 tarpaulin sheets to 10 severely affected villages as immediate relief. Along with the relief materials, medical aid was also provided to the seriously and minorly injured persons. The DDMA also said that two assessment teams were also dispatched to Athibung and Tenning, which were the worst affected, to assess the extent of damages and submit a report to the government. The DDMA further added that there was no report of any casualty so far. To end the evening news, here are the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says technology can play a big role in agriculture, health and education. Christians around the world and in Naglan observes Good Friday. Government issues advisory against calls impersonating Department of Telecommunications and threatening people to disconnect mobile numbers. An election commission says over 79,000 violations reported so far through Sea Vigil app since the announcement of general elections. This is all we have in the evening news bulletin. Good night.